Hello everybody, it's Jeremy here, and in this video we're going to talk about how to draw support and resistance the right way. This is an important one, you're not going to want to miss it, so let's go. Hello, hello everybody. It's Jeremy Whaley here from Trade Maestro. You can check us out over at trademaestro.com. I hope you're doing fantastic today and having a great day or a great evening, whatever it is. Whenever you're watching this, I want to cover a subject that is very important in terms of trading in general, but especially in the world of technical analysis, and that is the subject of support and resistance. Uh, you might think, oh, that's an easy one, but actually... I'm shocked. I don't know if you would be shocked or not, but I'm surprised at how many people draw support and resistance the wrong way. And then they kind of had this idea that, you know, oh, well, support and resistance don't work. You said it was going to work and then it didn't work the way you said it was going to work. And well, it turns out they didn't even draw it right. So let's get into how do you draw support and resistance the right way? I want to teach you how to do it. And then specifically, I'm going to show you how to do it on two stocks actually two charts. One is a stock. It's going to be GameStop. And uh, I'm going to do one on crypto on Bitcoin because these are two trades that people say you can't do it on. And I'm going to show you that you can do it. In fact, um, it's, well, it's remarkably simple, but let's, uh, let's just get into it a little bit. Let me kind of teach you what support and resistance is. And then I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay, so the first thing is let's define terms here. Support is the price point where a stock finds more buying pressure than selling pressure. And I use the word stock just because that's what was in my slide deck. But um, you can apply this directly to crypto. It applies exactly the same to Forex, to futures, or anything that you are trading. So if you're trading Bitcoin, XRP, or you're trading any stock, obviously any stock, any Forex currency pair, whatever. This is exactly the same. So it's a price point where we can just trade the word stock for an issue. An issue finds more buying pressure than selling pressure and the buying pressure drives the price higher. That's gonna be your support area. And resistance is the opposite. Resistance is the price point where a trade finds more selling pressure than buying pressure and the selling pressure drives the price lower. Okay. So those are kind of your general definitions there. Uh, what I want to do briefly before I get into uh, the actual uh, details of it, let me just kind of give you a visual for this. Think about it this way. Support is like the floor. Okay. So just think of support as the bottom and resistance is the top. It's the easiest way to remember this. And the idea here is that as we get up to resistance, the selling pressure starts to build and that selling pressure drives the price down. As we get down to support, the buying pressure builds and drives the price back up. Okay. And so you end up with trades that kind of start to move between support and resistance. Uh, if you have a trade that does that consistently, it's a pattern that we call a channeling pattern. Okay, so that's a trade moving back and forth between support and resistance over and over again. And then you can build on that. And, um, you know, as it breaks out, old, old resistance becomes a new support and on and on. So that's, that's getting a little bit more advanced, but that kind of gives you the idea here. So the question then becomes, how do we draw support and resistance the right way? Because a lot of people do it wrong. They draw it off of the wrong price points. They have lines everywhere. Um, some people just make up stuff and they say this is where they want it to be and they're way wrong. So let's take this look, take a look here at this Bitcoin chart because that's the one I have up. And if you look at this, the first thought might be, where's the bottom? Where's the top? Like, how do I know? Or if you've been trading this a long time, you might be thinking this thing is just super volatile. I mean, it was only a few months ago we were at 67, 68,000. Now you're down here in the 20,000s. So, you know, to go from almost 70,000, we'll just call it 65,000, down to 20,000, that's pretty volatile. Question is, how do I know where the bottom is? Is this the bottom? Have we hit support? How do I know? My favorite, the other day I saw a headline, saw a headline from a so called analyst, and she, he or she, I think it was a she, she said, we have no idea. 
where the bottom for the market is right now. But we do. All right, so let's talk about it. How do you find the bottom for a market or a top? How do you, how do you know where the turning points are? All right, so if I can get my slides to go forward here. Here's how we start drawing our support and our resistance. Number one, we're going to start with a line chart. A lot of people, most people start with a candlestick chart or a bar chart. We are going to start with a line chart. Now, the line chart is the most basic type of a chart. It's going to be the chart that just simply draws a line and connects the closing price of the trade, whatever it is you're trading. So it's the closing chart, basically. It's a line chart, just looks like a mountain. Okay, so we're going to start with a line chart. Next, we're looking for two points to make a line, three or more points to establish the trend or the pattern. And then after we've charted the entire chart, then we're going to flip over, look at our candlesticks, and we'll get a few more details. And we might adjust some lines. We'll get some great confirmation, um, but maybe do some line adjustment. And that is... This is the right way to do it. This is how I learned to do it 20 years ago. This is the right way to do it. You're gonna get the most accurate lines when you do it this way. Is that to say that you couldn't start with a candlestick chart? Yeah, it is actually. Uh, now, I, if you've done enough of these, you can kind of look through the candlestick chart and you know exactly where to draw the line. But that closing price is the most important price of the day. And it also gives you a nice clean reference that we can draw off of. Whereas the, with the candlesticks, you end up with these long upper shadows and lower shadows for the candlestick. And sometimes if you're just drawing off the candlestick, you'll just totally miss the pivot area where your support or resistance line should go. So it's really important to start with a line chart. So let's get over here and start doing it. And the next thing that you want to know as I kind of orient you to this uh, whole process of drawing support and resistance, I try to put a decent amount of time on here. Um, for this chart for Bitcoin, I'm going to put um, going back to about May 2020 because there's a pretty good turning there. Actually, we'll go back a little bit further here. We'll go to about uh, 2019. Uh, for stocks, I will very often go much further than that. But with crypto in particular, because crypto is so new, um, oftentimes you can only get two or three years worth of data that's actually relevant to work with. So uh, in this case for Bitcoin, I'm going to go back to about 2019. And um, then we'll, we'll kind of work backwards from there. So let's start here. Uh, the next thing you need to know, if you can see on my screen here, I hope you can see it. The cursor that I'm using, I'm in a um, charting software called TradingView. If you don't have TradingView, then I will put a link below and uh, you can sign up for a free account at TradingView. And you can actually do everything I'm teaching you here for free at TradingView. And then if you decide that you want to have a paid account, then uh, you can do that as well. But everything I'm teaching you, you can do for free. So I'll put that link below. And if you do use my link, then, you know, I might get $5 one day as a referral commission, which would be incredible. I mean, I could buy like a whole Dr. Pepper or something. But anyway, so yeah, you know, if you, if you don't mind, use my link. All right, so this trading view, we're using the cursor that looks like a crosshair tool. So hopefully you can see that in here. And uh, the tool that we're going to use to draw, if you come over to the upper left corner, we're going to use a horizontal line. See that horizontal line in there? Which, if I select that and then I click on the chart, it puts a line in there that looks like that right there. But what I'm going to do, if you look in here, and I don't know how well you can see this on, the, uh, on this little video here, but it's option H. So let me write that up here. Option That should have been a P, option, H. So it's my option key on my computer keyboard and H for horizontal. And when I do that with the crosshair cursor, so I put my crosshair cursor here and I'm going to, on my keyboard right now, I'm going option H. Boom, it puts a line in there. You see that? Right where my cursor is. So that's how I'm going to do this. And I'm going to do it very, very quickly because I have option H to work with, okay? And now you've had a little uh, trading view tutorial as well. Very handy tool. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, coming over here to the chart, right at the top of trading view, we're gonna change it from candlesticks to line chart, okay? And you notice that my line, or my uh, chart just changed to this blue line. Uh, I find kind of find that hard to, to read actually, so I'm gonna change that color to, uh, Let's see, let's go with, uh, yeah, we'll just go with white. 
kind of like a gray white. All right, so there's your line chart. That's what Bitcoin looks like on a line chart. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the extreme top of the chart. And I'm going to mark the highest high on the chart, which happens to be up here around 67,700. And I just did that. I just put that line in there. Next, I'm going to go to kind of the bottom of the chart, which I chose to come back to about 2019. So the bottom turning point that I have is about March 2020. And I'm going to push option H and put a line in there. Now, what you notice, I'm going to kind of slow down as I walk through this. What you notice here is what I'm doing is I'm actually framing this chart. Okay, so what was pretty random before is now kind of getting inside these boundaries. I got the price action on the left side. I got the two purple lines now that I've drawn on the bottom and the top. And on the, on the left side over here, I said price action on the left, I meant on the right side. And then on the left side, I got my tools for my drawing. So when you look at this, you kind of say, okay, now I'm starting to get a picture. And the best metaphor I got for this is literally a picture. If you've ever gone to like the Grand Canyon or somewhere and you've taken a picture and let's say you're trying to get the background, but then you take a picture and the people are so tiny that they can't, you can't see them. So what do you do if you zoom in and you crop the picture, now you're focused on the people and everything else is just kind of a background. That's what we're doing here. What we're doing is we're taking the focus off of all the stuff on the screen and instead, we're putting the attention on the price action of the trade, okay? So that's the first thing we're going to do is draw the extreme high and the extreme low. Uh, I'm just going to abbreviate this extreme high and EL for extreme low, okay? Next, I'm going to take my cursor and I'm going to start working from the bottom up. And I'm looking for everywhere that I can start connecting at least two turns with my line chart. And the best one that I get is right here, right around 7,004. 64 right there. And let me kind of just draw your attention to what I'm looking at. I have some um, right, well, let's try this. There we go. I have some turns that happen right there, right on top here, and then a bottom right here, and some bottom turns right there. Can you see that? So that price point, 7,400, is a very, very good turning point for. Bitcoin, okay, and that was, uh, I said 7,400, excuse me, that was more like 7,000, yeah, right around 7,400. All right, so I'm going to continue moving higher with my cursor until I get some better uh, connections in here, and I'm, I'm going to skip, so let me just kind of address this. Sometimes when you have a price range like this one that looks really small in the chart, you can just skip some of the, the finer points and just go to the major, major turning points. So that's what I'm gonna do right here. What I'm gonna do on this is I'm gonna kind of hit this major area that I'm circling in, in yellow. And uh, maybe this one here in the middle, we'll, we'll see what that one looks like as I look on that. But I'm definitely gonna grab this, this turning point right here, right around 13,000. And I'm gonna put a line in there. And you're gonna notice that it's a little short right here. Okay, so we'll, We'll kind of come back and look at that in a minute. Uh, this this turning point right here, right around 9,400, it's pretty major. I have quite a bit of turns that happen there. Even though it's not really a very relevant price right now, it was pretty relevant back in 2019, 2020, all through here. It was pretty relevant. So we're going to go ahead and put that one on the chart as well. And that pretty much wraps up this bottom portion of the chart. I want to get to the more current stuff because that's more relevant for what we're doing right now. So I'm going to move um, my cursor a little bit higher here. Now I could put a bottom in here, could put could put a turn right where my cursor is, right around the 17,000 range. But you know I only have no no real solid turns. I had some slowdown here in November 2020. That's it. But the peak there in 2020 matches up very well with what we just put in as a bottom. So I'm going to put that in there as a line right there. You see that? And that starts to clean this thing up. Now we're starting to really get some turns established. Next area I'm going to come into are these major areas right around 28, 29,000. I'm going to try to connect as many of these turning points as I can. And you're going to notice they're not perfect. Okay, so it is true. People say, oh, you can't chart Bitcoin. Well, it's maybe not as easy to chart as some of them, but this one is absolutely chartable. I'm going to put it right there. And what I did is I kind of created a zone. Sometimes when I've got a lot that's happening in the same price range, 
I will connect as many actual dots as I can, but then it kind of creates a little zone like you see in here. And sometimes you have a lot of stuff in the middle. So that's fine. You just kind of know where that zone is. In this case, it's for Bitcoin. Next, we're going to put one right there. Boom. Look at that. That's, that's perfect. It's going to be push the wrong key. Sorry. Um, right there, right around 40,000, specifically 40,400. Notice I've got this turn here. I got this turn here. I got this one here and I got a bunch of junk right up in here and I got some more turns right there. So that 40 kind of 40,000 range, a very, very important turning point for Bitcoin moving a little bit higher here. Got one right there. Uh, it's about 40. For almost 45,000, a little bit less than 45,000. So we'll put that one in there. And I'm just going to draw your attention to what I'm seeing. I'm seeing that turn. I'm seeing that turn. I'm seeing those turns right there. And I'm seeing that one right there. Okay. So very clean, tight turns that you're seeing in those, those spots. And then the next one is going to be right around here. Right around 48,400-ish. And you're going to notice I kind of split the difference on a couple of this, a couple of these. That one there, I'm a little low. I'm right on some of those turns in there. There's one here and one here. And I'm a little high for this one. So this is going to be an interesting one to look at with our candlesticks. And then just kind of finishing this thing off, moving on up, looking left to right with my eyes as I... Move my cursor up. I see there's a turning point right here around 53,000. And then there's a pretty major turning point right here at 59,000. And then there's some up here around 63. Now, suddenly, take a look at Bitcoin. It is in a nice, clean grid. Look at that. Wow. How good is this grid? Oh, it's very good, actually. Uh, but uh, before I do that, let me... Um, let me come in here and show you a couple things that I want to draw your attention to. So I'm going to circle some areas. This one right here is the first one, kind of the bottom right corner. The one I had said while I was drawing it, I wanted to draw your attention to. This one was a little bit, the line's a little bit higher than the turning point. And that particular line is a little lower than the turning point back here where I just drew. But it is right on these turning points. So... This is a great example. I want you to watch those. I want to draw a couple more circles and we're just going to see what happens when we flip over and look at our candlesticks. And I think you're going to find that what we're getting here is some good confirmation from our candlesticks. So take a look at the, just kind of pick one of those or, or those yellow circles that I drew and I'm going to flip over to candlesticks right now. And let's see if it brings any clarity. And wow, does it ever. Mm -mm, look at this. Okay, so I'm going to come back to the line chart. Take your pick of which ones you're looking at. I'm just going to rotate back and forth here. And you're going to notice that between the line chart and the candlestick, the candlesticks are pounding into some of those support levels many, many times. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to actually change my pen color to... Um, let's try this orange here and I'm going to draw your attention to several spots where the candlesticks really confirmed the lines the, the intraday shadows give us great confirmation of what is happening and um, yeah so I'm just kind of looking through here and I'm picking some I'm probably not getting all of them but I'm picking some okay Almost every one of these that I told you to look at with the yellow, it gave us better confirmation. So I'm coming back to my line chart. See that? We, t we drew the lines originally on the nice clean line chart, but some of them we had to kind of fudge it, kind of get in the middle a little bit. Then you look at your candlestick and those intraday shadows absolutely confirm. Some of them go exactly to the line and then turn. A lot of them move beyond the line. Okay, so you see that moving back and forth here? Just kind of moving back and forth. 
And what that does is it tells you, gives you confirmation that we've drawn these in the right location. Now, a lot of people want to know, they say, Jeremy, why can you not just draw from the candlesticks? Well, you could, but if you did that, let's come back over here for a minute and let's look at if we drew these from candlesticks. Okay, so let's get rid of all these drawings and instead get my yellow back here. If we were drawing off of candlesticks, you would have added a line right here. It didn't need to have one. Your support pivot area that's that's up here around, oh, 19,200 would have been down here at 17,800. And that's not to say that 17,800 isn't an important part or isn't an important point, but the more important line is the one that we drew, okay? So what ends up happening if you're drawing off of candlestick shadows, that is the intraday portion of the candlestick, what ends up happening is you end up drawing the line in the wrong spot because you're chasing shadows instead of chasing the closing price. I've done this for years, I mean, for decades, literally 20 years um, since I first learned how to chart this way. And the difference is remarkable. Uh, I have pr private clients that I coach and whenever we, this is one of the first things we do is we make sure they can really draw their lines the right way. And what I run into is a lot of them. In fact, the vast majority of them are drawing them wrong. You're drawing them off the candle shadows and then they wonder why things aren't lining up or why they're getting close, but not very good. Or they end up with lines everywhere because they're drawing every little candle shadow. The reason is because they skipped that first point, which was to start with a line chart. So start with a line chart, then move over to a candlestick chart. And you're looking for at least two points to establish the line, three points or more will make the trend. And then after you mark the chart, then we flip over and we look at the candlesticks and we get some adjustments or we get some, some confirmation. And sometimes we get to um, make some adjustments. Sometimes the candlesticks, they just reveal enough. You're like, okay, I'm going to slide it right over here. But most of the time what they do is they just confirm what it is that we've already seen. All right. So if now you've seen it, I'm going to do another one here in just a minute. Uh, but if that's all you do, if that's all you look at, then now you've seen it. You know the process for drawing your support and resistance lines. I've done it with Bitcoin. Does it work? Yeah, it works. Okay, let's go back over here and let's find out exactly how well it works. Now, Bitcoin, because it doesn't have a lot of price history in this price range, it's going to be kind of not as good of a historical test. But the test that we always ask is we always say, if it worked for, uh, if it's working now, how can we have known it? And if it would work for the future, then it would have worked for the past. So we come back here and we start looking and seeing how much confirmation. Look at that one right there. Okay, hold on. This is in 2018. 2018. There's the pivot right there in 2018 at just under 20,000. That was the line that we just drew, wasn't it? Th this was not on the chart when we drew it, okay? Because remember, we were looking at 2019. And look, going all the way back to 2018, we're getting major lines in major spots that whole grid was established in 2018 even though we were looking at 2019 when we drew it you say what are you looking at i can't see it all well let me let me zoom out a little bit for you okay so there it is you can see current time frame over here here's the most recent bottom just below 20,000. that's where we hit it here on the way up in 2020 and that was also the peak at the end of 2017 2018. Now, depending on the chart that you're charting, if you've got a lot of history, you might be able to go back and look at years. I've done charts on this where uh, Exxon Mobil is a good example. Go chart Exxon Mobil. And uh, you'll be able to go back for years, sometimes decades. Now, what will throw it off, and depending on the charting software that you have, you may or may not be able to do this, is whenever they do a stock split, it will readjust everything and it kind of messes everything up. But if you have a charting software that will allow you to see unsplit prices, which to my knowledge, we cannot do in TradingView. Um, but if you can find a charting software, like I used to use a software called Trade Navigator, and it had a feature where you could look at unsplit prices. And if you do that, then it shows the, split, the price split. And what you'll find is the grids will go back. Oftentimes, these support and resistance zones and their lines, we can go decades uh, sometimes 20, 30, 40 years, and the lines from 40 years ago are still working today. 
or lines that we drew today, if you go back in time, they were just as relevant 40 years ago. So that gives you a lot of confirmation that, okay, if it works now, if it worked then, works now, it's going to work in the future, right? So that's just one example here on Bitcoin. Um, let's go over and do one on GameStop because, well, because I want to. That's why I did a video a couple weeks ago on GameStop and I got, I got more dislikes and hate mail. I couldn't believe it. So those of you who are trading GameStop, you freaks. Yeah, okay, I said that. Go ahead, hit the dislike button. I know, I know you think that I'm a freak because I'm sitting here telling you how to trade it. Look, it's not working for you. Okay, those of you been trading GameStop and AMC and some of these meme stocks, you keep doing it with this philosophy that if you are just tra trading this great short trade um, and you're trying to squeeze it out, that eventually the trade has to go higher. Well, it doesn't, number one. Number two, if you use my techniques, you can make a lot more money. So if you want to just follow the principle of we're going to mess up all the people that are shorting the stock, then that's fine. For everybody else who's trading because they want to make money, let me show you how to make money with GameStop. How would that be? Would that be cool? Yeah, of course it'd be great, good Jeremy. Thanks. You're welcome. All right, so I've pulled up GameStop here. Let me share the screen. Look at that. Now, this is one that's actually... Um, they just went through a stock split. Okay. So if you're not familiar, GameStop just went through a stock split and I really wish we could see unsplit prices. I really do, but we can't. So we're not going to see some of the very, very relevant data that a unsplit price would show us, but we can still chart the most recent stuff. And we're just going to follow the system that I just shared with you. So here's the system again, start with a line chart, draw two or more points to make a line, three or more establish a trend. And then after we've drawn it, flip over to your candlestick. So let's go do it. Okay, so back over here, flip over to our line chart. And um, I'm gonna draw the extreme high here, right around what is now reading 80, almost $88. And that was not the case before this four for one stock split. It was like 200 and I forget what the number was. Well, it's four times 88. That's what it was. All right. So um, that's your extreme low pretty much. And the only thing that's really relevant at this point, I'm just kind of zooming out here. Um, yeah, because the split, it really changed the view quite a bit. But I'm going to go ahead and mark this one here around 1475. And then we're just going to focus in on the more recent time frame because that's about all that's relevant at this point. Um, I'm going to come on up here and draw right there at what is now $20. And uh, I'm going to draw one here at $29.30. And I'm going to come up here and I'm going to draw one at almost $40. It's like, it's like $39.80. And these are actually getting pretty close together, relatively speaking. $48. Um, there's one right there. Uh, I kind of have to do this one because it made a turn right there. And uh, we'll do one up here. All right, so you hear me kind of hesitating. Uh, this was not a great turning spot because it only did it really once. Now, we had some right in here that kind of gave me two points, but I, none of these were lining up. And the reason is because of all the emotional trading behavior that's taking place with GameStop. So if you're not familiar with the story of GameStop, Basically, a bunch of hedge funds, hedge funds shorted it. They were holding like a 20 to 25% of the stock in a short position. And a bunch of traders, particularly on Reddit with the Wall Street Bets group, said, we're going to buy and we're going to hodl. We're going to hold on for dear life and see if we can squeeze out the short sellers. So that created a lot of volatility. And that created um, all this movement. Uh, I am not going to get into fundamental analysis on GameStop and whether or not this is a good trade for the long term. I'm not going to get into whether or not the uh, short trade of the hedge funds was the right thing to do or if I agree with Wall Street bets. Um, I do agree with the little guy. I like seeing the hedge funds squeezed out. But really, that's not how I trade. Like, neither position is how I trade. I don't 
philosophically particularly agree with either one of them. I'm just looking for price action. So what we've identified here is we've seen the price action. There's some irrational behavior because we've had so much emotion that's been going on, but this is actually a very, very well-disciplined stock. Let me show you what I'm talking about. We'll come back over here. Um, you're gonna notice that everywhere I drew the lines, it, it really cleaned this thing up quite a bit. Let's come over to our candles and wow, isn't this interesting? This line, let me flip over to my line chart again, okay? I'm gonna draw here. Um, let's see what happens here. Let's see what happened in here and here. And this is how we start to confirm that we've got lines in the right spot. Okay, let's see what happened in here. And um, check this out. First of all, this is another great example of why we do not draw off candlestick shadows. Because had we done that, we would have resistance way up here rather than where it needs to be, which is right here. Notice the two confirmations that we got from intraday highs. That is huge. That is a great confirmation. We almost got one here. That is a great confirmation of this line, which I was very hesitant to put in there. And then we got two great confirmations here from this line, which I was hesitant to put into, uh, put in there. Um, so that's good. We got some confirmations here. Again, I wasn't even expecting that. We got confirmation here. Almost got some in here. Didn't get that. Um, yeah, so we got a lot of great confirmation. There's your chart, folks. There is the grid for GameStop. Now, a lot of you, you're looking at that and you're thinking, well, what do I do with it? I don't know what to do with this thing. That's because you haven't learned how to trade yet. I'm teaching you how to trade. So those of you, and look, I'm not trying to make fun of you. I'm really not. I'm happy that you're trading. Many of you, GameStop has been your entry into the stock market. And that's awesome. Just learn to actually trade the stock market and learn how to actually trade GameStop. And here's, I know the hate comments have got to be stacking up right now. Um, but here's what you need to know. If GameStop can break out of its new resistance, which is at $40 here, if we can break out above that, then it's time to buy. Then GameStop's going to go somewhere. The next place it's going to go is about $48. It's going to literally work its way up the grid. When we get to $48, you're going to hit this resistance. Okay. Here's the beautiful thing for those of you gamers that are trading GameStop. Trading like this is like a game. You're trading within boundaries, okay? So GameStop breaks out of its resistance. You trade to the next boundary, which in this case is $48. If we break out beyond $48, you trade to the next boundary, which is in this case about $55, okay? If it breaks out beyond that, you trade to the next boundary, which is about $62.50. And if it breaks out beyond that, you trade up to the next boundary, which is about $75. Now you know where you're going. That's why this is so valuable. For people who buy on HODL, look, Fine, buy and hodl on principle, I don't care. But if you bought and hodled GameStop, you probably didn't make a lot of money because you missed all the opportunities to get out of the trade and take your profit. Now, in the same way, we can use it to the downside. Let me go full screen here and I'll show you. To the, in the same way, if GameStop comes down, here's your support level right around $30. If it doesn't hold its support, where's the next support? Boom, it's all the way down here at $20. Now, I happen to think that it's going to hold its support there, but if it doesn't, your next support is at 15, and then it's like way down here, no man's land. But um, there's your grid. Now you know where GameStop is going to trade. And in the interest of keeping this video relatively short, I'm already at 33 minutes. So, you know, I could just sit here and do these things for the next five hours. Um, but if you take this philosophy and you do it for a chart that has a ton of history in that generic price range, You'll, be, you'll realize you can actually take this, build the grid, and these lines are going to stay forever, basically. Um, I just taught you how to do it for GameStop. Copy this. I don't care. Um, mark these same lines on your chart. I don't care. And here's the grid for you. Now you know exactly what to expect with GameStop. We did it just a few minutes ago on Bitcoin. Here's your lines for Bitcoin. Mark them. I don't care. Copy them. Or better yet, go do them yourself. That's what I really want you to do. Go do them yourself so you can then turn around and go do it for Ethereum and you can then go do it for XRP and you can do it for any other trade because this process is the process for how you draw support and resistance the right way. 
And like I say, I've been doing this for, for 20 plus years, exactly like this, and it always works. You always get pretty much right within the right pivot area. And then this is the beginning of all of your analysis because now you know where the framework is, you know the, the building blocks, and then we can build all of our framework for our analysis off of this. So I hope this has been helpful for you. I hope you've learned a lot. Uh, if you didn't learn a lot or if you think that I just rambled, just go back through it and learn it. I promise I just taught you one of the most important foundational lessons for charting that you will ever, ever learn. And if it seemed boring to you, this is where the money's made. Trust me, this is it right here. This is the beginning of making big bucks with your trades. All right, so uh, listen, if you want some more of these, uh, subscribe so you can get notified every time new ones come out. If you got a particular video you'd like to see, then uh, put it in the comments below and I'll see if I can't make sure that, that video gets done for you or at least reference to maybe something that I've already done. Uh, if you've not subscribed to my mailing list, then do so and put a couple links here below. If you're trading crypto, join my seven day crypto challenge. It's completely free. If you're trading stocks and you wanna learn how to pick better trades, then join the pick winning stocks challenge. And I've also put a link down here. I will put a link down here for trading view so you can start a free trial with trading view and get all the stuff that you need so that you can take your trading to the next level all right thanks a lot for being here hope you guys enjoyed it hope you have a wonderful day and until next time happy trading to all of you we will talk to you soon